Max Olson, TheAthletic.com, national writer, college football writer, great friend of the show from day one, joins us, Sikkim 365 Radio. And Max, thanks for your time. What were your thoughts? I, I've been thinking about this for the last couple of weeks. We haven't been able to get you on. Did they make some decision where the transfer portal information won't be as available? Is that going to like make your job harder? <laughs> Uh, appreciate you having me on. Uh, <laughs> they decided that, uh, yeah, so the NCAA decided uh, to uh, set up two-factor authentication for uh, logging into the portal. So people who have been logging into the portal who shouldn't have logins to the portal, uh, yeah, haven't, haven't, are, they are having a tougher time uh, getting on there. So it's uh, you're seeing fewer people tweet about it. And, you know, the names still end up getting out and kids still go in and all that. But uh yeah, I think the NCAA finally figured out a way to have fewer people snooping in there. And uh, they used a brand new piece of technology, two-factor authentication that, <laughs> you know, has been around I know. since I, I, we'll 2009. I anybody else adopts it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, golly. Why didn't I invent that, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, Max, uh, the college football playoff uh, derailed. We just had Bob Bowlesby on right before you uh, talking about, you know, how you know they missed an opportunity um, and that now they have to go back to the drawing board. Do you find it kind of silly that, look, if you can agree that you don't want to do it now, you could at least start working on 2026 now so then you when you go to the tv people you can say here's what we're going to do <laughs> right yeah yeah sure i you know you would think that uh that, that'd be the case but you know certainly this is uh, i can also understand why folks like bob Bolsby who put a lot of uh you know he, he invested a lot of his own time and effort into this and putting the original proposal together uh with the other three folks that, that were on that committee and I can certainly understand, uh, you know, wanting to uh, take a break from all this and being frustrated by, uh, you know, all the politics that, that went on over these past few months to uh, to delay this thing and hold it up. And, and uh, so I, I don't blame him for trying to take a break from this and, and, and letting people cool off a little bit. Uh, certainly, we've talked about it a bunch on, the, you know, when you guys have had me on, but it's a frustrating deal. I'm, I'm certainly disappointed that, uh, you know, that the, the folks in the alliance, you know, uh, hit the brakes on this for everybody. And, uh, you know, I think we'll see probably over this period of time between now and 26 that, uh, you know, guess what? The 14 playoffs uh, probably going to go a lot like it's gone and uh, probably is not going to uh, benefit the Pac-12 or the ACC very much. Max, uh, Art Bryles is back in college football, a uh, new offensive coordinator under Hugh Jackson at Grambling State. Uh, your thoughts on uh, you know, what has obviously been a long journey, a lot of, you know, getting a job and then having it taken away, you know, hours later and, and all of that. But uh, just your thoughts on, on what that move means and, and Grambling State. Yeah, certainly it will be uh, interesting to see, you know, what they look like offensively. We haven't really seen uh, Art Brow uh, calling plays on offense in, in quite a while here. Um, I, I think that it's uh, surprising. Um, you know, you would think that Hugh Jackson – has, has met other people who would be deserving of these opportunities, but this is a friend of his and he's willing to, uh, you know, take all the heat that, that comes with this. And, you know, I think when I've talked with uh, other coaches over the years, the, the, the term they always used with Art Bryles was, was radioactive. They, they just thought he was really untouchable from a hiring standpoint and uh, certainly surprised that uh, Grambling would, would go in this direction. But I, I, I think, you know, cynically, you kind of always had to assume over the years here that, uh, somebody was going to take a shot, and it probably would be probably at a lower level school where there's not as much, uh, you know, media attention and, and scrutiny and stuff like that. You know, one thing, Hugh Jackson tried to bring him in as a volunteer, just like as an analyst with the Cleveland Browns, and about, and even the owner said good. And then about a day later, he was gone because, again, that's the social media backlash. I'm not so sure about a week ago when the story came out that it wasn't like floating one of those test balloons up in the air just to kind of see the reaction. Do you feel like if he could get on campus, actually start coaching, that perhaps things do calm down and Grambling apparently is ready to take on that, whatever it is, and just get him on campus and get him on staff and let him coach? Yeah, I I, I think that anyone who's, who's tried to hire our brows or talked about doing it has probably believed that uh, – Look, that there's going to be immediately a lot of uh, a lot of heat and, and a lot of negative uh, attention that, that comes with doing that. And I, I'm sure Grambling is assuming that uh, that that will come and then that will pass, and then and then people will uh, you know go back to focusing on, on other things. And so I, I'll be curious to see kind of what the the news cycle is on on this deal. And 
you know, certainly we've talked about this before on the, you know, when, when this went down over the summer, but I, th- I think you have to, you know, if you read the actual NCAA report, certainly the word you would not use on that was exonerated. So um, they, they yep. certainly have to answer for the fact that, uh, you know, tr- <laughs> the NCAA wanted to punish our brows a lot more, but, but, but certainly didn't have the means to do so. And uh, that's a, you know, real <laughs> red flag among many in, in making the fire. Max, I'm curious your thoughts on, uh, and this is kind of out of left field what we were talking about, but uh, Mario Cristobal and the staff he's putting together in Miami, uh, Charlie Strong, Kevin Steele, uh, he, he had a little bit of a time getting an offensive coordinator, but but looks like uh, he is, you know, they said he's got money to play with and he's playing with it all uh, right now in, 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 the, in Dade County. Yeah, certainly. It, it, it's interesting to, to see Miami really go for it. Um, and, and it's been, uh, you know, there's, there's been, it's kind, of, kind of like Texas in some ways, where there's been a few moments where you say, you know, Miami is about to be back and they just haven't been. And, uh, you know, I think that, that this move, not only with, uh, you know, hiring Mario Cristobal, but then also hiring Dan Radakovich from Clemson as the AD, um, was, was a massive move by the people with money at Miami. And, uh, you know, to, to get, Josh Gaddis and, and Kevin Steele is, is, you know, one of the more impressive coordinator duos anyone put together this offseason. And so, you know, I'm, I'm excited for the possibility. Maybe, maybe, you know, to a Florida State fan like you, not super exciting, but, you know, I think that, uh, it, it's exciting to see where this could go. If, if, if can Miami actually put it all together again in terms of getting those kids to stay home and not go to, you know, Alabama and Georgia and those schools? And, and can they actually build uh, something sustainable there? Max, uh, Jaden Daniels entered the transfer portal a few days ago. I know there were some rumors about you know him committing to Missouri that he had to clear up, I guess, earlier today. But uh, just uh, what do you make of the situation right now at Arizona State? And then what do you think of Jaden Daniels as a prospect in the portal? Paul, did I get that right? You're a Florida State guy, right? Yes, yes. that's true. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> say it, okay. say it okay, louder. Yes. Say it much louder. <laughs> it's true. Hey, um, you know, Jaden Daniels, I, right now I've got him ranked as the, the number two best available player in the portal. Um, and, and I think part of that is just you can you can have the debate over whether you'd rather have JT Daniels or Jaden Daniels. JT is kind of more of a one year take. I think I think Daniels, um, you know, I, I, I think Jaden Daniels is, is really talented player. And, you know, he's he's, you know, been a, basically a three year starter for Arizona State, a player who you know, didn't really totally kind of take the step in the right direction. He needed to over, over this last year or two under Zach Hill there. Um, but a very talented player that I think if he finds the right system uh, and the right coaching staff has a chance to be one of the more productive quarterbacks in the country this year. So I'm inter- really interested to see if he's staying in the Pac-12 at one of those schools. Is he going elsewhere? You know, I think a lot of the schools that had QB needs have solved them. So um, he's kind of a mystery guy in all of this. And, and I think that uh, – you know, certainly it made sense if he would leave Arizona State because his name was tied to the NCAA stuff there. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see where he ends up. Max, I know you got to go. How do you feel, man? You're, you're getting better? Yeah, yeah, we're good. You know, COVID finally got us, uh, you know, but but fortunately it was uh, just kind of a, a one or two day deal and then and then it felt a lot better since. So, yeah, back to normal and, and back to work here. Appreciate you asking. Yes, sir. Thank you. You and the family appreciate it. It's Max Olson, national writer, the athletic.com college football writer, with us Thursdays, most every Thursday at 4 o'clock. We'll have SMU head basketball.